everybody. Hi, very catchy I have, tune. I've got Linda G on with me. She's taking the place of Mel and Arthur because that's yeah. just how good she is. Mel, Mel is in Africa. He Africa, has a farm yes. in Africa. And Arthur's hanging out with Marina. So <laughs> he uh, he he took a film of some some lions crossing the road. A whole oh wow! Of them. It's just oh, that's cool. And I that's said cool. in the comment. Oh, kitty, kitty. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think I'd want to get out and pet them. So <laughs> so we want to send out love to Minneapolis who are going through a dam that's breaking as we speak. Yeah. I was just telling Sherry, honest to God, and you guys know I'm not going to yank your chain. I was talking to my friend Dan yesterday, and he was mentioning someone had said bridges falling and tunnels collapsing. I told him, I don't see that as much as I see dams, issues with dams. I no sooner said that today the dam is going down. Are we yeah. going to look and see and see how they're going to be? Yeah, yeah, we can check that out for sure. Okay. Um, because, I just uh, feel bad for all those families, you know. Apparently, it's the dam itself is okay. It's it's the it's the everything around it it's breaking mm. so it's leaking if you know what i mean yeah oh, we went through that over in new orleans during katrina i mean oh technically yeah. the hurricane missed louisiana they just got like a brush by the hurricane hit mississippi wow. what hit new orleans was there was so much water that the dam finally broke i hold it yeah and they've been telling them for 50 plus years, these dams are going to go. It's just isn't that what killed most people? Too? And that they're going to go. So, yeah. And then they brought in the, the some big engineers, and they had been complaining to them, telling them, "You got to shore these up." Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'd had several studies done over the years, saying, you know, if, if y'all don't get this taken care of now, it's going to be a disaster, and then. A lot of people died. I remember die that. before you get it fixed. I remember somebody talking about a rest home where the elderly were, and they couldn't save themselves. Uh, what was bad was the medical staff abandoned them. I know, and just left them there. And um, that was, yeah. I mean, I was living in Arizona when Katrina hit, so I wasn't even here. But I was watching every second I could on the TV on the news. Did you and know people I, that lived here? I knew a couple of people who had family that lived over there. I didn't know anybody personally that still lived in New Orleans. And uh, so. Angelic forms are standing around them and trying to help them. For uh, Milwaukee? For Minneapolis. I just pulled the sun. Yeah. It looks like they're going to be okay. They're hustling. They're, I think they're going to get a little bit of a break. Did you hear that that Sahara? Oh, yeah. So They're going to get a little bit of a break. So I think there's enough time that people can exit and save themselves. I'm not seeing it doesn't show tragedy and death. Yeah. But well, did I, it, I, it seems like I heard something, and I'm, I'm thinking it's for the same thing, that they were evacuating people in the area. Yeah. To, yes, to, yes. To try to make any, you know. Um, you know, can I tell you that uh, something really interesting? I, I watched the Weather Channel all day. Yeah. Do you know that Sahara Desert sand that you can see on the on the Earth views? Big old huge brown spot between Africa going all the way out into the ocean. It doesn't hit. It goes into South America, but it doesn't hit um, North America. That's part you of know that sand. It doesn't cause hurricanes. The sand is a saving grace because it won't let you. It can a hurricane cannot be started in that sand, but it can go further up towards North America. Oh. So I thought that was interesting. I never knew that. That is interesting. I just pulled the six of cups too. So. I think Milwaukee's going to be okay, except they're going to lose their dam. Yeah. Milwaukee is? Mini Minneapolis. Minneapolis, I mean. Yeah. I'll get the right city in a minute. 
You sound like me. I just got home from work. My brain's still mush right now. And uh, <laughs> it is just so damn hot outside. It's like. Did you have to work in the heat or were you okay? Oh, I work in an office. Thank the Lord. I mean, I'm in. How about office. your house? Are you, do you have air conditioning? At the house? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girl, I know. I didn't have air, air conditioning. My sister lives in Moran. I moved to Moran when I moved out here and it can get way hotter than it is in the East Bay. And I remember one time being at my sister's, it was like 108 degrees or something. The babies were in diapers and they just kept drinking out of their sippy cups because they were so thirsty. So when I bought this house that did not have central air, first thing I did, girlfriend, first nope. thing. Oh, yeah. I, had, I don't think you can buy any place in Louisiana. I don't think there's hardly anywhere down here that there's not AC. Yeah. Very few places. And, and there may be some older buildings that they wind up putting window units in because structurally they just can't put in central units. But, um, yeah, it's you can't survive down here without air conditioning. Didn't a bunch of people die in Chicago in a heat wave? That's happened before. It's happened in New yeah. York too, and it's, it's been a while going. back. Um, there yeah. was a bad heat wave that hit like Manhattan area or something, and there were people that were dying a heat stroke because they were afraid to open their windows for fresh air because of they didn't want people to, to rob them, you know, break right. in their homes. And so that's scary when you have to close yourself up like that, you know, and it's so down going hot, you can't catch yeah. your breath. Yeah. That's just wild. Um, I know uh, one of the topics I wanted to get some feedback from you on, I know I've read on it myself a gazillion times <laughs> and I think I'm just I'm I'm too close I to think the, we all have been the reading on the same thing a gazillion times but people need to be comforted in knowing yeah that this too shall pass yeah well with me it's our new governor uh Landry who's a MAGA governor wait is he the one that said you got to put the Ten Commandments yep Yep. But in the meantime, a 12 year old who still needs legally needs a car seat can have to have a has to have a baby. But you better put in them the to meantime, you. a federal program that gives kids K through 12 a hot meal a day and they pay for it. All that the federal government asks the states to pay for is 50 percent of the administrative cost of running the program. And that's it. Everything else is paid for by the feds. And. 600,000 kids that live in Louisiana are now going to go without food because that's a bridge too far for him. He he won't renew that. And that he budget. wouldn't accept money from the federal government. Right. And they're paying for it. All he has to do is cover half the cost of the administrative cost to run it. So I'm feeling this is going to piss parents off. I don't think he's oh, standing. There's been a parents. huge backlash, Democrats and Republican. Black and white, it doesn't matter because, I mean, even parents that can't afford to buy lunch for their kids, you know, you kind of get used to the fact you don't have to worry about that. They're getting a hot meal every day, you know, um, and for the poorer parents, it's that's a godsend for them, you know, because yeah, a lot of times they don't know how they're going to feed their kids. And but what else? For people who claim to be so self-righteous, so Christian, and so pro oh, yeah. and they you're going so far out of their way to be as pro-death as they can, you know. And, like, and you know what? And his nose up in the air and at the Ten Commandments, and Trump has violated every single one of those commandments. As well as most of the, the legislators in our state. <laughs> Well, now they're going to have, and he says, I can't wait for it to go to the Supreme Court. Well, now you're going to have all religions saying they want all their commandments up. Well, that's just it. There was a priest that did a TikTok who said, who really spoke out against it. I mean, he was hot under the collar <laughs> and he was talking about, so I guess that means we're going to have next to the Ten Commandments, the five pillars of Islam, followed with what's in the, the Torah, 
followed with what's in the Quran. And, you know, he starts naming off all these religions. He's like, where are we going to put the kids? You, <laughs> it's Good for him. Classroom's going to be nothing but religious texts. What's his name place. again, this governor? Landry. Jeff Landry. L-A-N-D-R-Y. And did he just win as governor? Yeah, he just won uh, back in the spring of but he won, he won because he's a Trumpster. He won because nobody showed up to vote. Why? I I don't know. Maybe they'll show the, up. The time. state Democratic Party did not put any effort into the candidate that we had running. Most people didn't even know there was a Democrat running for the governor. That's how poorly... You know, and this guy was begging for money. Yet we would have had our first black governor if he would have won. And uh, but the they they waited till the midnight hour to try to pump some some money and in advertising into his campaign. It's like, yeah, well, too little, too late. I know people that I talked to personally that were like, I didn't even know we had a Democrat running. I thought it was just okay. Landry running. So it was Appleby's MAGA. He is MAGA personified. Yeah, but what he's doing now is waking people up. Oh, yeah. But that's they what's scary is because we have a MAGA governor, a MAGA state house, and a MAGA state senate. And they are falling all over themselves seeing how fast they can shut down programs that the former governor has put into place for the last eight years. Because the what former was governor was, was a Democrat. He was a very conservative, very Catholic Democrat, but he was still a Democrat. And so it's like <laughs> these people. You are know just, what? In about two years, how long does this guy get to stay in office? I uh, can't remember if it's four or six. It's four years. Four, four years. Okay. So he's so still got roughly been... about three years left of him. Because in about two years, there, there's a petition going around to recall him. Well, he was also, he was our attorney general before he became governor. And he was one of the first AGs in the country to sign on to the stop the steal nonsense that Trump started after the election. He was like all gung up. Oh, so he might get in trouble then with That's being part I'm of hoping. the insurrection? That's what I'm hoping then, you know, yeah, maybe he's one of the ones. It's showing, it's showing in two. It might even be February of next year. Something That'd happened nice. that he's put up on the platform. I'm getting temperance reversed. I'm well, basically, the... temperance reversed is not status quo. People are sick of his bull. Yeah, I'm also getting the Nine of Pentacles reversed. And I don't normally have reverse cards. But then I have the world. I think that's just everybody's going to be watching them. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to like what they see. He's, yeah, then the Seven of Swords. He's oh, walking the battlefield. The Seven of Swords followed, followed by the Three of Swords. He's going to get okay. hit hard. And you know that big mouth Jackson, the, the doctor? Yeah. The ethics committee has come back now and said that he was using up the money for his campaign for personal to go in hotels and live it, live it up. So now they're going to do something on him, Big Mouth, the one that said, Biden needs a, a drug test. Yeah, like they're going to find drugs in Biden. Biden says no, and you know what? I hope he sticks with no, because I don't give it. You've got no business taking the blood of my president. Yeah. <laughs> uh, something else I heard over the weekend Trump saying something about well he's complaining because we can't sit during the debate Biden never asked to have chairs I never, them to sit I never heard Biden complaining well you no. know we worried about Trump because he's got to change his diet at some point right yeah I know um, I'm joining up with Helen Irish Granny Tarot and Denise, uh, um, Denise Siegel, and uh, Nate, uh, Nate the Clairvoyant. Yeah, we're going to do a post 
debate show Thursday night. Oh, so that ought to be interesting. I'll be I'll be hoping that it just fall. He falls flat on his face. Did you guys read on him? How it's going to turn out? How's it going to turn out for Trump? Just give us the four one one. Look what jumped out of the deck. A disaster. Well, you know what I felt. It literally felt, jumped out, went across the desk. I, I felt that there's a possibility he wouldn't show. He's not practicing at all. He's just doing these fake fraud things that he pays people to come. But I felt, I was feeling he might even turn around and be say this is a setup or something and leave. Just walk off. Queen of Pentacles reversed. Jesus, what is it with all the damn reverse cards? I got the two of pentacles. So people are going to be weighing it out. Yeah, you know what? Biden has policy. Oh, yeah, this guy's going to have to pick the swords up off the battlefield. Biden has some good stuff in his pocket. You know what I'm saying? He's ready to go. He's got the nine of cups in his hopes, dreams, and wishes. Oh, look at Oh, yeah, yeah. I would say we have always known Trump was a fraud, but I will say this exposure will definitely end him. Because he's going to give himself credit for everything, and then Biden can turn around and tell the truth. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not true. And the good news is they're going to cut off his mic so he can't talk over him. <laughs> That'll be the best damn thing they could do is just to completely just cut him off. Because now he's talking something about and they're going to not let me talk or some some. He's going to come up with some bull that he, I almost feel like it'll be totally unfair and or he walks off the set, something. But I see... Biden continuing with the conversation. Yeah. I actually saw Biden standing up there by himself. Yeah, that's what I keep seeing. Yeah. Is nobody else there but him. And then Biden's yeah. able to tell everybody what, you know, what he's looking at, what he's planning on. I know they released uh they released an ad today. I I saw a headline on it they released an ad the biden camp released an ad today um something to do with a date with today's date had something to do with um something that the republicans did i i don't know i didn't like i said i catch bits and blips I know, and, I I catch the whole thing. and um so uh someone did ask me what do we see happening in Florida? Well, that, I was so funny you talked about that out. because uh, just FYI, you probably don't know, but um, she is not making any sense. Eileen, she's not yeah. making any sense. She's letting that Trump's people talk like they're making sense. They're not making any sense. She's telling off uh, the DOJ guy, like, you know, don't talk so loud or don't talk over me or something. And guess who was sitting in that place today? It was Jack Smith. He was in there. And he's checking it out. Yeah, they're getting ready. She's getting ready to lose her. I'm telling you. Judgeship. I'm I've him. felt that from the beginning. They're going to. She's not going to be a judge. She's more. even talking about how much money they spend on the special care. Like she's in charge of the money. No, you're not. Let's not look at out of your pocket or your state budget. So, well, he promised her uh, uh, on the Supreme Court. Oh but yeah. See, the thing is that he's not going to win. Tell me yeah, about Anna. She would love to just push this off, but I see Jack Smith, and it's like tick tock, tick tock. Tell me what's the outcome of Cannon. Tell me what's the outcome of Canada. Not good. Bad news. With ta-da! 
Oh, now you got the tower. I got it the first time. You know what's going to happen? Reversed. She's definitely going to be disappointed. Look at Ten of Swords. So what's going to happen, I think, she doesn't even have time to catch her breath. I'm almost feeling like Jack does something and then boom, bada bing, bada boom. Knight of Wands reversed. Okay. But then I get There's the another man papers. coming in and telling her, handing her her papers. There's another man coming in. I got the going to in one. Oh, that's what I got. One oh, week, oh. one month. Yeah. So she's delusional. She's she's talking out of rear. She's not making any sense. Oh yeah. She's that she's talking crazy. Yeah, I love it. So she can I take a look at Jack real quick? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at Jack. Let's see look at my favorite here. guy. Jack. I always fall in love with the leading man. Oh Jack. Where is you, Jack? I I'm love how he just kind of shows up in the courtrooms. Yeah, he showed up. Cases. Right. Like nobody knows he's, knows he's coming. He just suddenly he's there. It's you like, know, uh, I think I was with Arthur and I said, wait a second, wait a second. I see a Subway sandwich. <laughs> Jack, how are you going to, how is this going to pan out? How do you feel? They know she's a whack job. It's almost like they're, they're walking carefully because she's a whack job. Yeah, and if you, if you listen to what her former two aides that quit on her. That quit? What did they say? Well, they've said she's just out to lunch. I mean, you don't give up a position like that. That's a very coveted kind of position. Though. Yeah. And they just walked away. It's like, okay, it must be bad if they're just walking away from it. I think those two people actually wrote to the higher court and said they were worried about us. Yeah. Well, for Jack, I get the six of pentacles. Okay. But then I get the seven of swords. He's working hard. He's got the three of yeah. pentacles. Yeah. But I get the king of pentacles. That's good. And the page of pinnacles. What's with all the pinnacles? Jeez. And the wheel of fortune. Oh, fortune's great. Good news is a coming. Yeah. Good news is a coming. So yeah, I've got yeah. the ten of cups before him. So let me tell you something. It might be right before uh, uh, Biden wins or right after, but it feels about a bing, about a boom. I don't know who's going to take this case. I don't know if it's a, there's a man involved with this and a woman, but I feel when they take over, it's bing, 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 bing. I yeah. wonder if he's even going to open up uh, in Bedminster. He might just say, well, screw this one. We'll come back to this. Let's head to Bedminster. Listen, he's guilty of sin. That's why she's fighting so hard because he's guilty of sin. And they all know it. That's what's so frustrating is they all know it. Well, they don't want they don't want any kind of a, a DOJ or anyone looking in their dirty laundry because they know they're they're screwed. Yeah, they want to control everybody else's lives and what they can and can't do, but yeah, they don't want anybody looking at their life. It's like uh, no, that's exactly. not how it works. Exactly, doesn't work that way. Right. So what's our next one? I just got to go grab something. Yeah, yeah. Do what you need to do. Need me to pause? Oh, yeah. Pause. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we can put it on pause. You know, um, I should I should be cooking, but I tell, I tell you, I get so lazy. Oh, that, yeah, it's just so doggone hot. It's like, I don't yeah. want to eat anything. It's just too hot to eat. It's too hot to want to cook something. Yeah, yeah. Um, Are we back on? Yeah, yeah, we're back oh, on. Okay. So, uh, so where were we? We were looking at um, Cannon. Yeah, she's, she's going to 
down, but she's going to go down in a twinkling of an eye. I don't even know if she can catch her breath or find out what happened to her. Well, that's interesting. It's not going to be drawn feels, out. It's just going to be Because I felt like she was going to be gone. It's a man and a woman. I think Jack probably goes to the higher court. She might know that's going to happen, and then boom. She might try to pull, pull something while this is in the 11th district, and then boom, she's going to get hit hard. She's actually going to be taken off and not be able to work as a judge anymore. I got, yeah. I got Her dreams are reversed. Yeah. Seven, seven, uh, six of cups reversed. Yeah. Six of wands reversed. So no jumping on the horse to success. Yeah, well, she's making stuff up. Like you said, if those two people that worked with her can talk crap, you know. Yeah. But the last card I got on her, where did I, I just put it back in the deck. I got the devil. Yeah. It was upright. <laughs> she's willing to lie and do things that are not. He's almost, it almost feels like Jack is letting this build up. Does that make sense? Sometimes you think, why aren't you immediately? It's almost like it? he's letting little crumbs fall that they can they can poison themselves with. Or that's you know, how I've been feeling. You know, it's like he's giving her enough rope. Yeah. Yeah, he's I think he's been doing that across the board with all of them. I honestly God don't feel with. him I feel he's frustrated, but I also feel he's got a plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've always felt like he had it in control. Yeah. I've always felt like he's got it in control. We may look at it and go, what the hell, dude? Do something. But I keep hearing in my head, just be patient. It's yes. Coming. And here's the other thing I'm going to tell people the hit I got yesterday. I want to tell everybody that no matter what, if we have another trial or not, probably better if we don't have another trial. Uh, because uh, Trump always makes off with this, you know, whenever, you know, he got more money. In fact, Putin, Putin talked about him today. He said, yeah, the American people don't trust our justice system. And Trump made more money since he got indicted. It's like, yeah, he, you're talking for, you know, well, I'm glad we're not Russia. Jesus. Meanwhile, Russia's getting their yacht clubs blown up to smithereens. <laughs> I saw that today. I thought, oh, well, I wonder who's blowing up there. There's a big I factory saw. that does their uh, space stuff. That bo He's blowing them up. I'm telling you, Ukraine is going to win. I'm telling you right now, Ukraine is going to win. Well, but, Zelensky is, is very smart and very yeah. strategical. And I feel like he's, he's had it under control from day one. <laughs> This and is Putin what I'm just can't wait. Yeah. Putin just yes. keeps waiting for for Trump to get in office. Yeah. But he's not gonna make it. There's that damn devil again. <laughs> I get the devil every time I read on Putin. Yeah, well, he's very evil. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. Trump is bad. Trump can't do as much as Putin does, but if Trump could, he would. And I'm getting the Ace of Wands reversed. So all his ideas are going downhill. Oh, he's been threatening us with nukes to, from the beginning. Of, he threatened I know the, uh, the former FBI director has uh, let it out today just how bad the death threats to him, the judges, the juries, the, the court staff, how bad it really is. It, they, I saw an article on it. I got to kind of skim it. I didn't get to really read it. And, uh, and they were talking about it was a million times worse than most people realize. The amount of death threats they get. The death threats to Marshawn's court or? All of them. They're all they getting the, the judges, the court staff. Um, yeah, they still do their duty. know who the jurors are. If the jurors have been picked, they're, they're 
giving them death threats. But you noticed uh, Biden's jurors, they have no problem. They can talk in public. No, no biggie because they found him guilty. Exactly. So. But, you know, I'm, these people that are doing these threats are just sitting behind a computer and have nothing better to do. Yeah. When, when Trump is asking for everybody to march on his behalf, I don't see people coming. They didn't show up in New York. No, he was, he was like, begging for them to Donald come and, 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 and come and protect them and whatnot. And five people would show up. I mean, yeah. it was it was embarrassing, to be honest, for him. I'm, not that I feel sorry for the man, but I almost felt sorry for the man because it was like nobody was showing up. It was, yeah. And um, somebody posted something just the other day. Because they sent me a link. They uh, He was doing a rally somewhere. And it was like a couple of days before they were running ads in the paper for to pay people to come to the rally. And, uh, and cheer him on. So it was like they got to pay for his people to come. That's and for anybody sad. to show up, you know. And, and it's sad. like, okay, that's kind of bad. Yeah. yeah. And did you hear about the uh, guy in Arizona that was stealing the voting machines? And no. he was a Trumpster. Oh my goodness. Just got arrested for stealing some of their machines. And he's a maggot. He took them from like their warehouse or where were I, they keep so them? He was working for them and he managed to sneak in there and grab a couple. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, the maggots are all over the place. Oh yeah. Oh, tell me about it. They're everywhere down here. You can't, you can't hiccup without running into a but why do I feel it's not as bad? Why do I feel you're going to have a lot of quiet people who you would think were Trumpsters going to vote outside of him? Yeah, that's the feeling I keep. I mean, I live, I think we're the third largest city in the state where I live at. I'm in Lafayette and we're a university town. I mean, we have a big state university. You have LSU and Baton Rouge, and then you have UL Lafayette here in Lafayette where I'm at. That's where I work. And um, so we have a huge diversity of people here. You know, people from Middle Eastern countries, people from India, people from China. You've got faculty, you've got staff, you've got students. And nobody really has that much problems. I mean, it seems like most of the issues, most of the weekend shootings, all that kind of stuff is all the rednecks. It's, it, you know, or it's the really, really poor communities, but you're not seeing it from the the folks from other countries that are here, you know, I mean. Well, that's what this guy in Europe said. He said the one thing that the Europeans noticed that there's more shootings in the United States than any place else. Yeah. And the other thing but is it's the white people doing it. It's not the others. <laughs> like it was a militia that didn't wasn't it a militia that shot all those people up in uh was it Ohio or uh, I think so. There was a bunch of shootings. Week. I know I, I was doing a show with I don't remember now who somebody over the weekend and um and we were talking about it, I said, you know. I said, I've lived in Lafayette for, with the exception of the few years that I moved to Arizona before I came back, I've been here roughly 40 years in this city. And uh, I said, we never, you would hear about mass shootings and stuff other places, but it was never here. And, and about, I don't know, I guess about eight, about eight years ago or so, we had a mass shooting here at one of our theaters. And only two people were killed, two teachers, two pre, uh, like kindergarten age or, you know, uh, teachers were killed. And that, they were just random. They they got hit. Um, but uh, it was in one of the local theaters. A new movie had come out. So the theater was, was like full. Packed, and this guy just walked in and sat down and. A little ways into the movie, he got up and just started shooting. At first, people didn't even realize what was happening because you're, you're on a dark theater, you know, and there's yeah. stuff happening on the screen. And, you know, you sit and you think to yourself, 
how many times have I been in that theater to go watch a movie? I can't even yeah. count how many, because that's like right a mile and a half or so down the road from where I live. It's right there. You know, Who was the guy that did that? Did they kill him? Or? It, no, they they didn't kill him. I, I believe he's in prison or in an in a institution. I don't know which, but he just, it was, um, what's that female comedian? Not Chelsea Handler, but the other girl. Um, kind of chunky, heavy set, blonde. Her uncle was one of the senators or something. Oh, I can't think of her name. But she had done a movie, like a stand-up type movie, you know, about women, female power type thing. But it was like a funny movie, you know. And um, and it would had released. It had only been playing at the theater like about a week or so. And it was, so it was a packed theater. And that, I mean, they had that theater shut down. For almost a year, the theater was shut down. And that's an eight screen, eight, 10 screen theater. My God. Know? And so. But listen, when I, go, when I go to the movies or when I uh, go anywhere, I'm always looking at the exits. Yeah. That's the first thing I look for now. How's, what's the fastest way to get out of here? Um, you know, I. I I was raised with guns. My father taught me how to shoot. And I never really had any desire to own a gun. Now I own guns. Yeah. I don't have one myself right now. I mean, I grew up with them. My grandfather I was a hunter. Yeah. I used to go hunting with my granddaddy when I was when I was a kid. I had my own 22. <laughs> it was my responsibility to take care of it, clean it, oil it, the whole bit. Um, yeah. But my husband couldn't stand guns, and I was not a gun freak, so we never had them when my son was born. And then my brother bought him like one of those pellet guns. Yeah. Uh, that uh, when my son was like fourth or fifth grade, and uh, and so his dad was like, "Well, if you're gonna have a gun, you got to know how to use it." So he made a point of teaching him how to shoot it, and because it wasn't like we didn't know how to do it, we both grew up. That's like me. Guns, you know, my dad used to eat squirrels when, he when my son was in the Navy for five years. He never, like I said, he never messed with guns that much, but he got marksmanship medals and stuff because wow. got a sharpshooter medal and a marksmanship medal. And I was like, Well, how'd you manage that? You've never messed with guns. He said, You aim for the target, and you pull the trigger. And I'm like, Okay, smart ass. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, and I know a lot of people that have guns that carry guns. It's like I don't have a problem with somebody having a gun. Yeah, I have a problem with somebody dressing like Rambo to go to Target. That's what I have a problem with. And that actually happened to me. I back when they first started all that stuff, and I was in Target. And what and happened? Some guy came in just completely. He you saw him? guns on him. Yeah, yeah, it's legal here. They can lock and load it and walk around all they want. And uh, and I just left my cart right there in the middle of the aisle and, and just what? left the store. Did he shoot? A manager saw me and he's like, ma'am, you're not going to check out. I said, you got a terrorist in here. I'm not staying because I don't want to be a victim. And I left. I was Did like, he end up shooting anybody? No. He was just in there to walk around and show, show it and had a bigger bigger willy wally than anybody else you know so oh like in texas they show some of these little petite women with these big huge yeah the guns are bigger than they are it's like, oh my God. like you're gonna stand there and shoot that damn thing i guarantee you five minutes your arms are breaking trying to hold oh, i remember that's shooting teaching us how to shoot a rifle i remember my shoulder hurting like hell oh yeah i mean you know the whole shoulder area would be bruised <laughs> yeah bruised and sore i mean you know i when i was a kid i was a city girl during the weekend i was a country girl on the weekend because we'd go to my great grandparents farm to help them with their farm stuff so you know i did all that stuff on the weekends get the eggs milk the cow my great-grandmother made her own butter and cheese and stuff. So, 
you know, sit out there with that big churn. Yeah. What about ice cream? Did you guys make ice cream? Yeah, she would make, they would make ice cream, fresh peach or strawberry or blackberry or whatever fruit was, was ripe. That's the one that we had. Um, she would keep the milk. She had glass jugs that when they would milk the cows and they would put it in there and she would put wax paper over the top with a rubber band. Wow. And put it to the chest freezer. And then the next morning, she'd take one out and let it start to thaw. And that's the milk we would drink for breakfast that morning after we went out and did all the chores. And there would be like big chunks of milk ice in it. <laughs> and to this day, I can't drink milk unless it's partially frozen. Isn't with that something? Milk chunks in it, you know, with ice chunks in it. I can't yeah. drink milk. I'm lactose intolerant. I'm not a big milk drinker, but if I if I do drink some, it's, it's I gotta stick. But I do like ice cream. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they uh, so was it pasteurized? It wasn't pasteurized. In those no, days. Uh -uh. this was straight from the cow. <laughs> wow, this was straight from the cow. So you know, did she was she a good baker? Did, did she make good biscuits and gravy? Oh God, yes. She I'll tell you, a you woman. She hardly spoke any English. She mostly just spoke Cajun French. I mean, when I was little, I was around it. I understood a lot of it. I spoke a little bit of it, but then I was away from it for so long, I lost it. And so yeah. now it's gibberish to me again. I don't, just like I can catch a word here and there and I'll, I'll oh yeah. I, I had a it. friend from West Virginia who made biscuits and gravy and I kind of cook her biscuits and gravy, but I traveled back in Tennessee and Kentucky and all that. I think Louisiana too, Mississippi. And the one I found one place that was close to the biscuits and gravy, like Lois made. Yeah, it's it's an art. I mean, I get frozen biscuits because <laughs> when I make them from oh, scratch, yeah. they come out like hockey pucks. I mean, they're just <laughs> And I don't know why I can bake. They have great biscuits you can open from a can and stuff. Yeah, I buy them by the bag. The, yeah, those are good too. But you know, um, that way you can cook just one biscuit or you can make a dozen biscuits, whatever you want. You know, she used to have friends send her fat back from Virginia and she'd yeah. make fat back and gravy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, fat back. Jeez, I haven't had that in a while. You got to boil mm. it, get that salt out of it. Yeah, my brother makes red beans and rice all the time. And when the weather's cool, I make gumbo all the time. So Yeah, gumbo um, can be a little too spicy for me. Well, if it's cooked right, it's not spicy. Right. You know, it's good Cajun. Because Creole gumbo is tomato-based. And it's usually yeah. a lot spicier than Cajun gumbo. Cajun gumbo is roux-based, and um, which is just flour and oil cooked down until it's like a paste and, and it's as brown as you want to make it. And then you start adding all the other stuff in there and throw it in the pot. So, um, Oh, I love red, red beans and rice. And, uh, but yeah, my brother makes, I don't like red beans. I just, I had to eat beans and peas when I was a kid and I didn't like them. It's like, I'm an adult now. I don't want them. I'm not going to eat them. <laughs> my mom used to make the best pink pinto beans cooked with fat back yeah, yeah. Uh, my husband loved uh, uh, collard greens. I love collard greens. He cream. would make big pots of collard greens. I'd be like, okay, you can only cook it when I'm not at home because <laughs> the smell would make me nauseous. Yeah. And he would he make, does. he'd make a big old pot of collard greens, sit down and eat the whole damn thing. And uh, I'd be like, you're going to be pooping for days, man. <laughs> Anytime he felt like he needed to clean out his system, he'd make a big pot of collard greens. And it, yeah. and it worked too, probably. Oh, yeah, it worked. <laughs> he didn't want to go into that bathroom after him. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I'll go use the other bathroom. <laughs> there you go. But um, yeah, he, um, but he was a Mississippi boy, so he grew up with that kind of cooking. Yeah, no. My grandma was Mississippi. She was born yeah. in, it starts with the I, Iola, Io, something uh -huh. Mississippi. Yeah. He was from and, Pascagoula, uh, which is right on the, right on the coast. And her, yeah. my grandmother, who died when she was like 40 something, there's a picture of her, it's in my book, a picture of her with the kids and they're all barefoot. Yeah. And she's got her hair just up, just pulled up and she looked like she was 
70. Yeah. And yet she was young. She My died husband young. was a baby out of seven. Wow. He had three older brothers and three older sisters. In fact, he was born the night the oldest child, his sister, graduated high school. Mama oh. missed her graduation because she went to labor with him. And she oh. teased him about that all of his life. She's like, well, Mama missed my graduation because of you. And, uh, but when you get those big families, they usually know how to cook. Oh, yeah. And he was the first one to pass. Out of all really? the kids, he was the first one to go. And then the oldest, she was the next one to go. And the rest are still with us. So, what did your husband pass from? Uh, well, he had <laughs> complications, but his health had just deteriorated to the point that he just, I think his body just decided one night, I'm done, <laughs> and just checked out. He had been injured uh, back in 83, uh, right after we got married. He had a commercial size air conditioning compressor dropped on him, and it just tore his back up. And he went through, he Hell. Was, he, we were getting ready to have his fifth back surgery just before he died. He died like three days before the surgery was scheduled. But it was like he'd do the surgery and it'd be okay for a little while and then it would be worse. Poor and then God. they'd do another surgery and it'd be okay for a little while and then it would be worse, you know. And, and How it was old just was this he? up and down. He was 46 when he died. Oh, my God. 40, he would have been 47 if he'd lived to his birthday. But he um he died in two thousand. Was it suddenly? Was it just all of a sudden he he left? <laughs> no, his his the last year and a half, his health was just really starting to go downhill. His low blood pressure for him would be like one eighty over one thirty. He was on five different blood pressure medications, trying to regulate it. He took uh. Uh, morphine and codone and codeine pain pills for the, for his back because it was so bad. And they were, uh, it had got to the point where there were no discs left in his spine at all. It was all bone on bone. Oh, he's doing good. And they now. were the, the surgery that we were getting ready to have done would have put steel wraps and rods. And they were telling them, like, you'll not ever walk again, you're going to be in a chair, you know. so you might as well get used to that idea. And um, he actually got double pneumonia and we didn't realize it. And um, he thought it was just cold because it was in February and it was wet and cold and rainy, you know. And um, he uh, he went and laid down one evening and when I went and checked on him, he, he was gone. gone. I did CPR on him for like 20 minutes waiting for the ambulance to get there. They couldn't well, find the driveway. We lived out in the country. I finally had to stop to run down the end of the driveway and flag them down because they couldn't find the driveway because it was Jesus. Lived way, we lived way out in the country back then. And uh, and yeah, it's I remember uh, the first ambulance got there and they started working on him and then another ambulance showed up. And when the second crew went to the back, I heard a guy from the first crew tell a guy from the second crew, we pumped out three bags of fluids. We still can't get air in them. That's how full his lungs were. And I, and I knew in that instant. <laughs> he suffocated. He coming yeah. back. And, yeah. uh, and I just kind of held on. And then they came out and confirmed it. And uh, by then the sheriff's department was there and we had to wait for the homicide detective to come because it was a unattended death at home. Young, we have yeah. to determine that I didn't kill him, you know, so. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I remember one of the, uh, one of the deputies asked me, was there someone I could call? And I said, I need to call my mom. And he said, okay. And he went and got the phone and I remember him dialing the number. And I don't remember talking to my mom at all. She says that when the phone rang and it was like right at midnight, a little after midnight. And she said she instantly knew he was gone the minute yeah. the phone rang. And she answered the phone and she said, all I did was, was holler mommy into the telephone. Yeah. And I couldn't say anything else. And the 
the deputy took over the phone and you know told her yeah. what was going on and she ran across the she and my brother lived in the same apartment complex on different ends and she ran down to his place to to get him to bring her over to the house oh. and uh and so we had to wait the coroner's office got there and we had to wait for the ambulance for the detective to get there before the coroner's office could take him and it was this all happened on a friday night the day before our son's 17th birthday oh my god and he so was out with his girlfriend and his buddy and comes home in the middle of it and he's like that's the hardest thing i've ever had to do in my life yeah is yeah. to look my baby in the face and say your daddy's gone you know and he first um, he, did was he went straight back in the bedroom and the emts didn't want him to go back there and he's like no i have to see it for myself and, uh, did uh, has he come to visit you at all? You and your son? He does on occasion. Yeah, it's, he does. I can't hear him. Um, <laughs> he likes to tug on my hair. I used to used to be down to my waist. Okay. He had a thing about keeping my hair long, and when I started cutting it off short, he messes with my hair. Um, and I've had other people that have picked up messages from him. Right. And give them to me, and which is really nice. Oh, he's glad to be out of that body. He's really struggled. Oh, he was, yeah, yeah. I just, I know. Uh, I was uh, yesterday. Isaac and I were doing our 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 mental wellness show. We do twice a month, and um, and I was talking. I said the hardest thing I had to deal with myself after he died was feeling guilty for feeling relief that I didn't have to take care of him anymore. Yeah. I said, and I felt so horrifically guilty. Guilty about, felt, yeah. It's because like I my felt relief because yeah. I got hurt just before he died. So I was dealing with my injuries, his injuries, trying, you know, and just all of it all wrapped up together. And I was, my mom was like, I don't know how you manage. She says, I kept waiting for you to just collapse. Right. You know, just because it's just too much. My friend Ron just recently died. I used to do prayers for his. He had uh, a bad uh, prostate cancer. It had already gone up in, inside of him. He lived, you guys, with our prayers. He lived for a couple more years. Yeah, I but remember praying his, for him. His duodenum exploded. So those uh. gains, that acid was in it. But he was so weak, they couldn't do surgery. So it was a yeah. horrible, horrible last couple yeah. of weeks. But he finally passed in. It's a weird feeling. You're glad that he's not suffering anymore. Well, that's it. And I mean, we would have had to have driven to New Orleans for my husband's surgery because that's the, the charity hospital was there because he didn't have insurance. And so that in a way, I'm grateful that it happened at home because yeah. we were home. And I wasn't off in a strange city where I didn't know anybody and nobody knew me. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would have been difficult. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's like I, I can think about it and talk about it now, and I'm I'm okay with it. You know, I, it's not heartbreaking or heart rendering anymore. I can laugh at the crazy things he did and, and stuff. Um, but every now and again, something will something will happen, and it's just like boom, kind of yeah. hits you all over again. Yeah. And my son is the spitting image of his daddy. Was, oh. It's it's eerie how much alike they look. And, so. uh, and every now and again, he'll do something, turn, make a face, something, and it's just like a sucker punch to the gut because it's yeah, that's cause that's just like yeah. yeah, yeah, and, uh, that's great. And it's same now with my mom. I mean, she's about twenty five feet straight ahead up on the shelf here. <laughs> Because she wanted to be cremated, we had her cremated. So, and I bought two urns, and one's for my brother, and one's for me. And, oh, okay. Uh, and somebody was like, "Well, which half do you have?" And I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Well, if you got two urns. Which half do you have? The bottom half, the top half?" I said, "No, it's, it doesn't work like that." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, it's all in the bag together. We just split it up, you know. There you go. There you go. A little bit of everything, but. Uh, well, girlfriend, well, thank you very much. We we kind of went over a little bit. Um, I know, but we had a good time. We did have a good time. Thank you for filling in for the gentleman oh, you're who welcome. abandoned me. And yeah. uh, <laughs> you'll have to come back when we've got them on too. So 
Okay. It'll be, Sounds good. It'll be, be more fun. We do it on the second and fourth Monday of the month. So. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. He'll be back by the fourth Monday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're welcome anytime. Thank you. Thank you. It's and always great. Sure. I do uh, I do a late night show on Saturday nights now, my slumber party that I do. At I start at 11 p.m., so that's like 9 p.m. your Jesus, time. Jesus, girl, how do you? Uh, oh, my God. Not me. Yeah. I'm in bed asleep by 8. Yeah, well, it's I have insomnia so bad, and I don't have to get up early on Sundays, so a couple of times I do just a pop-up, and then everybody was like, you need to do this regularly. So I thought, yeah. okay, oh. why not? So oh. I have a ball now. I have people that email me now and say, can I come on your late-night show? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah, come Johnny on. Carson, Johnny Carson of the Psychic. That's it. I'm I'm pulling in all kinds of folks, so that's fun. And, okay. uh, well, so thank you cool. very much, Linda. Very cool. And, uh, oh, I am. I got both fans going and the AC there running and and I got All to right. hang out with my favorite lady psychic. So, you know. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I'll talk to you later. Okay. And okay. blessings to the Let me stop this and I will oh. end our recording. It, it will. Oh, damn it. Come on. Pop ups, pop ups, pop ups. They want.